Hey there, good looking. Do you hate yoga? <laughs> I know, what a way to start a video, huh? Listen, this is a yoga session, but it is perfect for non-yogis. In this session, I'm going to focus on our postural muscles, which we need to pay attention when we're over the age of 40. We're opening up the front of the body with this series, as well as stretching into the chest, shoulders, training the muscles of the upper back and the core. So grab your yoga blocks and let's get going. Hey there, welcome. I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com and hey, I help women over the age of 40 reclaim the tush of their 20s or in this case, the posture of their 20s. Actually, maybe we don't want the posture of our 20s. Maybe we were slouchy little buggers back then. So let's just say we're just going to improve the posture no matter what your age with this yoga series. Now, I mentioned that you need yoga blocks. If you don't have yoga blocks, a foam roller would sub in wonderfully. If you lack either of those tools, perhaps find some thick um, blankets that you can roll up or pillows or hardcover books. But if you also are wondering, hey, maybe I should get some yoga blocks or maybe I should get a foam roller. What should I get, PJ? I've got a link down there in my description and you can check that out after this video. So let's start with either placing your block, your foam roller, or as I said, a thick rolled blank would work as well. Just at the tips of the shoulder blades, feet flat on the ground. Now, allow the upper body to drape over, back of the head hits the ground. So you may have to adjust, so it's just on the bottom of the shoulder blades, your roller or your um, block, feet flat on the ground, knees bent, chin tucked in, and breathe. What we're doing here is opening up your T-spine, that's the vertebrae, between the tops of the shoulders to your waistband, the largest part of our spine. And this area tends to get quite locked up. So we're going to work on extension with doing this, which is gonna feel maybe a little uncomfortable if you're tight there. So that's where I want you to focus on your breath. Bring that air, that breath deep in the belly and then fully exhale. Do a check through the rest of the body. See if you're holding tension in your shoulders, in your abdomen, maybe even in your thighs. Just try to release that tension. Arms are down by your side, palms up. Allow the fingers to curl naturally in. Back ahead is resting comfortably on your ground. Eyes can be closed or a soft gaze. Two more deep breaths in. Open the eyes if they were closed. Roll up so we can pull the block away from the upper back and now bridge the hips up and place the block underneath the hips. Now you can go with a couple of different levels. You can keep the block flat or bring it onto the mid level. And this is just gonna help us hold this bridge position creating a bit of extension now in the low back, but we get a good stretch through the front of the body. Arms are still down, down by your side, feet hip width apart, firmly planted into your ground. Back of shoulders, back of head on your ground. Play around with a couple of different levels that the block will allow you with this bridge position. 
without any low back pain though. This is a great position if you have a desk job. This is a passive bridge. In workouts, we would do this without the block, firing at the glutes and the hamstrings. But for today's purpose, I just want this to be passive. Try to release the muscles and the glutes. Allow the front of the hips to open. And two more breaths. Push into the ground with the feet, lift the hips up, remove your block or your foam roller, and just pull the knees into the chest and maybe rock them side to side if that feels good for the low back. Hands light behind the knees. Use the knees in a rocking pattern to help yourself up into a seated position and then onto all fours. Wrists under shoulders, knees apart under hips. Inhale, allow the low back to sag and allow the shoulder blades to come together. Exhale, push the ground away, tuck the chin in. Eek out that full spinal range of motion. Follow your breath with this. On that inhale, we sag, we look up. On the exhale, we round, we tuck the chin in. Maybe your toes are tucked in or maybe the feet are flat on the ground. Two more. One more. Neutral spine. Untuck the toes. Extend your right leg so it's level with your ground. Point the toe. And now extend the opposite arm. So that's your left arm. Thumb pointed up to your ceiling. Now reach at fingertips to toes. Hips are squared to your mat. Working into the spinal rotators, multifidi, extensors as well as balance. Two more breaths. Now slowly bring that right knee in, keep the left hand off the ground and rotate yourself into a side plank. My wrist and my shoulder are aligned. My hips are squared. My right knee is still on the ground. Performing a modified side plank. And then let's take the shoulder and just perform big circles with that left arm, so that top arm. Really take that range of motion as deep and as big as you can. One more. Nice. Other side, or other direction, I should say. And that bottom wrist is under the shoulder. And now inhale, reach this left arm up past the ear. Feel that length in the top side of the body here. And then if you'd like, lift that top leg up and hold. And then if you want a bit more, bend that top knee and grab onto your foot and hold. So you choose which is going to work for you. Focus your stare if you find your balance is challenged here. Remember, you can always go back to straight leg, arm over the ear. And two more breaths. Working core, opening up the front of the body here. And Windmill back onto all fours. You stay where you are, I'm turning around. We're gonna take it into the left arm now. So let's extend, pardon me, the right leg, or sorry, the left leg out, and then extend the opposite arm, so our right arm out. And let's hold here, reaching fingertips to toes. 
Neck in line with the spine. Feel that core fire up. Focus on the breath. Right shoulder away from the ear. Now let's lower the left knee to the ground. Keep that right arm off and turn into side plank. Situate yourself so wrist is under shoulder. Lengthening that side of the body. And now left arm, big arm circles forward. Maybe even rotating the body a bit behind. Really eking out as much range of motion as you can. Other direction for three. Remembering that breath. And then inhale and reach the arm over the ear. Feel that stretch to the side of the body. And maybe you want to lift that top leg, make it a little more challenging. And then from here, maybe you want to bend that knee, grab onto the foot, pull the knee back and hold. Open the front of the body. Deep breath in. Exhale. Two more. Release the foot if you have it. Windmill yourself back to all fours. Inhale, allow the low back to sag. Look up. Exhale, push the ground away. One more. Inhale. Exhale. And neutral spine. Tuck your toes under. Press yourself up into downward dog. Feet are hip width apart. They're in a straight line, take a peek. Grip your fingertips into your mat. That will take some of the pressure off of the wrists. Legs can be straight or slightly bent. Heels can be on the ground or off, dependent on your calf flexibility. We're lengthening the back of the body now. From here, you can pedal your dog by simply dropping one heel and lifting the other one up. And then both heels pressing back, backs of thighs, backs of knees pressing away. Turn your gaze to your fingertips and now walk your feet to the front of your mat. So you may need to bend your knees to get there. Once you've got here, position those feet hip width apart. And now let's take the arms behind the back, interlace the hands and let the arms extend and let the chest come down to your thighs. Strong in the legs. Getting a stretch into the arms and front of the shoulders. Release the arms, bring them in front of the body. Give me half fold, neutral spine. And then exhale, release down. Inhale, press through the legs, bring the arms overhead, standing position. Exhale, arms down by your side. Here we go. Bend the knees. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half fold. Hands slide up. Neutral spine. Exhale, fold forward. Step both feet back into downward dog. Now, if downward dog's not working for your shoulders or your wrists, you can go down to child's pose. Two more breaths. Float yourself into high plank. Wrists align with the shoulders and strong core. Now, we're going to stay here to work into the core muscles. To modify, you can drop down on the knees 
And then to modify further, for those of you with wrist issues, you could come down onto the forearms, okay? Never feel like you have to stay on the hands if that's bothering the wrists. Now, if you are on the hands, I want you to pretend that you are turning or you're trying to tighten jar lids. And that's gonna fire up the muscles around the armpit area, which is gonna make our plank even stronger. Push through the back of the heels. Fire, it's happening in that core. Shoulders away from the ears. Gaze is slightly ahead of you. Two more breaths. Drop onto the elbows. Untuck the feet. Slowly lower your chest to the ground. Grab your yoga block. Extend your arms straight up. Chin is tucked in. Keeping the feet on the ground, just lift the arms up. So chest is on the ground and lower. Do it again, lift up. If you don't have a yoga block, see if you've got something light close by you to grab onto, or just have the arms extended and lift the arms up. Your thumbs are pointed up, feet on the ground, chest on the ground. We're trying to get the movement through the shoulders. Last two, one more. Remove the block out of your way. Bring your arms in what would be considered the letter V, thumbs pointed up. Now let's tuck the toes into the ground, keep the toes there. Chin is still tucked in, now lift the arms up. Once again, we're just lifting the arms, not the chest. Now, if this is uncomfortable to your low back, quickly throw a pillow underneath the hips. It's the beauty of working out at home, right? <laughs> You've got all sorts of things that you may not even think you own that can be used as fitness tools. As we lift the arms up, slide the shoulders down towards the back pockets and lower down. Last two. Find that breath. Now slide the arms so they're lined up with the shoulders and take a look. Thumbs are still pointed up. Tuck the chin in once you've seen that those arms are lined up with your shoulders and now lift up. Shoulder blades are now drawing together. Once again, feet stay on the ground. Belly on the ground, chest on the ground. Neck is long, back of the neck is long. Working all the posture muscles with these three movements. Last four. One more. Bring your arms in front, untuck the toes, press the hips back, sit back, arms extended. Walk the hands towards the front of your mat more so we can get, really get a length through the lats and through the shoulders forehead to the ground, or maybe that's not available to you, so grab your block or a pillow and place that underneath. Build up your ground. Release up. Taking our blocks, and if you don't have blocks, you could also use your coffee table or that foam roller. We're now going to place it into level two of the blocks, thumbs pointed up, Walk yourself back and now lower the chest down to the ground. My big toes are together, my knees are open. That's going to help me out because I have tight hips. If that's you as well, join me with that. The sides of my hands are resting on my blocks or maybe your coffee table or your foam roller. The arms are straight, the thumbs are pointed up getting more extension into that T-spine where we started with, but now face down, in addition to stretching in the shoulders, getting length all down the spine, and into the glutes too. Two more deep breaths. See if we can get that breath all the way down in the back.
and release. Place the yoga blocks out of your way. Flow back into the belly. Arms down by your side now, palms down. Tops of feet resting on the ground. Chin is tucked in. From here, let lift the chest now and the arms, trying to get the fingertips down to the toes. And then slowly lower, keeping that neck in line with the spine. So our chin is slightly tucked in. Once you've seen the move, I want you to look down. No need to look at me. Working extensors of the low back here. And then I love it when we're bringing those arms down, we're also getting a little bit of retraction in the mid back. So we're training our posture muscles as well. There should be no pain in the low back. So don't force it. Last couple of breaths. One more. Bring your hands up. Bring the left ear down to the mat and just rest. Release into the lower body, release into the glutes. And lift the head up, slide the hands right underneath the armpits, elbows in tight, mini cobra, press into the hands, lift the chest up, pull the elbows in tight to the body, and release down, three more. Tighten the muscles in your glutes if you're feeling that it's pinching too much in your low back, or decrease that range of motion. Last one. And release. Arms down, left ear to mat now and hold. And press yourself up. For the final stretch, we're going to get into the front of the body. Place the yoga block or foam roller works wonderful on this as well. And we're going to place the um, tailbone right on there. So if you need two side-by-side -side yoga blocks, go for it. Now once you've got it positioned, extend the right leg and pull the left knee in towards the chest, coming out a little wide so we can clear the rib cage. And hold. Now if you own a yoga block, if that's what you're using, and you don't feel much in this stretch, you can bring that yoga block up to the next level. Okay, and go from there. But you want this resting on the tailbone, so below the waistline. So it's on the sacrum and not in the lower lumbar. Back of the neck is long. And if you'd like, close your eyes. Lengthen that right leg, heel pressing in the ground. We're stretching that full right side of the body. Our hip flexors can get so tight with excessive sitting, even if we're squatting a bit too much and not stretching enough to balance that out. I've been known to teach one or two squats in my workouts. So this is a great way to release the hips. I love this stretch. And once we get that release in the hips, that length in the hips, we're able to hold that posture. Perhaps we're even able to get rid of any pain we have, maybe in our low back, maybe even into the shoulders and into the neck. The body is so interconnected. If we have pain in one area, that doesn't necessarily mean that's where the issues lie. We need to look at the whole body. Two more breaths. And release the left foot to the mat. Now let's bring that right knee into the body and extend that left leg down. Press the heel into the ground. And again, that 
Right knee is coming to the outside of the body a bit, clearing that rib cage. Lengthen that left leg, heel pressing into the ground. Relax the muscles everywhere else. Last two breaths. And release. Lift your hips up. Ending this practice the way we began with the T-spine opener, bring that yoga block, foam roller, rolled blanket, mid-back, and then drape the body over. Knees are bent, arms down by your side, fingertips curled. Nice deep breaths. Let the weight of the body drop into your yoga block, into your ground. Getting that extension we so desperately need in our T-spine. Oh, we get a length in the front of the body and opening into the chest. If you'd like, you can even bring your arms out in a T position. Maybe that allows you to relax the shoulders further into your ground. Play around with your position. Two more deep breaths in. And just roll off to one side into a seated position. Cross-legged or maybe placing that block under the hips if that feels better for you. And then stacking the vertebrae of the spine, ears over shoulders. Feeling that length, that opening in the body. This is where the body and the spine likes to be. So see if we can maintain that until our next workout together. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste, as they say in yoga. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. And if you would like more videos like this, click that subscribe button. I would love to keep working with you. Have a beautiful day. Mwah.